Today's uh, Wednesday, September 28th. We'll start the uh, Board of Directors meeting. Uh, we're going to start with the approval of the last uh, minutes of the last meeting, which is August 31st, and I get a motion to approve. So moved. Thanks, Thank Mike. You. Second by Denise. Any uh, additions, subtractions? If not, everybody in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's approved. We'll move on to recognition. Yeah, we're going to change it up a little bit. Jamie is going to uh, read the narratives. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm scratchy. That's all right. <laughs> That's I have a scratchy throat. Um, which will uh, even it out, save me from veering off as I sometimes do, as I know these folks very, very well. So we'll begin. Okay. First up, the one and only. You said you made it. I'm still here. You're still here. All right, well, a little bit about Bob. Bob Springer joined CDTA. 25 years ago, after being encouraged by friends that were already working here, and his friends told him that CDTA would be a great place to go because it would really help him with his career and help him move up the career ladder. So Bob actually started as a bus operator in 1997, and then he decided to try the other side of the house in the maintenance department. So he started as a cleaner, he worked his way up to a technician, and then made the move to the paint shop in 2015, where he's been ever since keeping our fleet looking spectacular. So Bob enjoys working in the paint shop, as he tells us anyway, because every day is different and every day is new and challenging. He said doing body work and painting is really creative and that's what he enjoys to do. Bob and the crew in the paint shop are the employees behind the pink buses that roll out every October. You'll be seeing those in just a couple of days. They get the campaign ready and get both of the buses ready for the campaign each year. So Bob tells us his decision to stay at CDT all of these years has been an easy one. He said it's a great career with great benefits and great people. He tells us his coworkers feel more like family than friends. In his free time, Bob enjoys hunting, riding his motorcycle, and spending time with his family. And we asked Bob what was on the horizon for him and his career at CDTA. And he says right now he's just enjoying his work and he has no plans to make a change. So Bob, congratulations on 25 years. Thank you. So uh, Pat Lance said we made it, right? and it's been a it's been a great and interesting road. Right? All I want to be is all I want to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Cool. So she goes, oh yeah, you can see where it's still irritated up on the top, and so we still got some. Running in the back. Like if I eat something. And it catches it. part-time in System 1, as a lot of our folks did when they started 25, 30 years ago, driving Route 12 for about seven months, and then he went part-time in STAR, which led to full-time in STAR for the last 11 years. So he's now part-time again to make sure that he has a work-life balance. Jim's favorite part of the job is the many people that he comes into contact with every single day. He says he gets to add a little bit of love to everyone's day. Working in STAR is different than fixed route and it's sometimes a challenge. He acknowledges that his customers are people with emotions and needs and that the assistance that he provides can be a comfort for him and that's a part of the job that he really enjoys. Jim says that CDTA has transformed completely. He recalls since he started in 1997, he remembers the garage getting painted and cleaned up and the implementation of uniforms and now being able to pick your own work. He says that being named 
2017's Best Mid-Size Transit Agency by APTA was really the cherry on the cake for him because it coincided with his 20th anniversary and he felt a sense of pride and accomplishment as well. So as mentioned before, the longevity that Jim has achieved was due to his work-life balance or the work-life balance that CDTA provides. And in his spare time, he participates in church activities and he's learning to play guitar, he watches old movies, and he loves to read. So Jim says his job at he loves his job at CDTA and has no plans for retirement. So congratulations, Jim. This is the face of Stock. Jim is the face of Stock. Um, another guy, we've been up and down, around the corner a couple times. Um, these are the people that make Certainly not least, Meredith Redcross. So Meredith is our benefits manager and she's been with CBTA for 25 years. So she's actually worked in the human resources department for the last 25 years. That's where she has started and that's where she's been. She joined the CBTA team because her late husband was working here at the time and a family friend told her that she should apply. So as the benefits coordinator, Meredith has an important job that touches really every corner of our organization. She is the resident expert on healthcare benefits, retirement benefits, and it says you're everything in between, which is pretty much true. <laughs> she says it's a privilege for her to interact with employees and our retirees every single day. And she said that's really her favorite part of the job, all of the interaction that she has with our employees and our retirees. And anyone who knows Meredith will tell you that she will go out of her way to help somebody no matter what it is. Meredith says she finds it extremely rewarding to help other people. So Meredith's career has spanned 25 years here at CDTA because she enjoys the people that she works with and what she does. And she used the word amazing to describe her coworkers and says they are more like family than friends. In her free time, Meredith can be found spending time with her son, her husband, and her dogs. Late days, restaurant hopping, or concerts are her favorite ways to spend a day off. Meredith says talking about an end date for her career is no time soon. She loves working here, and she says that she's not ready to let that go. So Meredith, congratulations on 25 years.
going to start off uh, with committee reports, and um, uh, I'm first up with the Board Operations Committee that convened on September 14th. Uh, we reviewed the committee agendas and activities for the meetings held during the month of September. Uh, we also continue to discuss uh, best how to balance daily service demands with employee availability, employee hiring, and retention issues are top of mind for the company. Bus operator availability causes daily issues, but our operations staff are up to task on a daily basis. We continue to look for creative ways to fill the income gap. Uh, we also uh, discussed the topics for our annual board retreat in November that will be held on November 17th. And Lisa Morello attended our meeting, provided an update on advocacy and legislative issues. Uh, though our advocacy efforts are year-round, we are preparing for the upcoming legislative session, and we will be focusing our efforts on outreach to our local and state delegation. Uh, the next meeting of the Board Operations Committee is Wednesday, October 12th at 9.15 here at uh, 110 Water Relay Avenue. Though we've talked about, Subject to change. Right, we've talked about changing the date of that meeting, so stay tuned. Uh, next up is Denise Figueroa with the uh, performance monitor in the audience. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, today we have three consent agenda items, so a little shorter than last month. Uh, first item that we have is approval of the contract for quality assurance services. Um, our contract for quality assurance services is about to expire, and an RFP was issued on, on board uh, observations, ADA compliance checks, and uh, quality assurance calls. Uh, five proposals were received, and the staff recommends a contract to the low cost proposer and the incumbent, which is Tech Valley Security. So we need a motion to award a three year contract with two optional renewal years to Tech Valley Security of Keats Greenbush for an amount not to exceed $404,513. Can I get a motion on this resolution? So moved. Second. Thank you, Paul. Any uh, discussion? Comments? Can we have a quick synopsis of what this is? Yeah, we have a firm that um, has people who board our buses. Most of this is pre-assigned work. Uh, they're looking for something. Uh, they work with the transportation superintendents. Um, a lot of times it's ADA checks to make sure that things are working the way they're supposed to do this. It's a uh, group of law enforcement retirees, uh, and they do uh, occasionally we have to send them to look for something that is suspicious that we can't verify. It's a three-year term. Yep. And it looks like they do a number of services. A lot of other categories. Does that include if there are disturbances on the buses by customers? They might. If we're having a, a lot of problems, we might send them out. You know, what is really going on here? You don't want to. And they're identified in training uh, so that you know, our operators know uh, that we have this service. Uh, we put trends down. Yeah. Uh, know this, is, this could be happening. Thank you. And we do some astronomers. Gosh, at least they see. Yeah, so there's value to. Yeah, the, uh, the, the uh, person who owns the firm is uh, Bob Wolfgang. He's the chief of police here. That's great. Anything else? All those in favor of the contract for quality assurance services say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? It's approved. Next okay. up. The next one is approval of the contract for shelter glass. Um, our contract for shelter glass is about to expire and a new contract is required. An invitation for bids was issued that included estimated quantities, glass quality, and storage requirements. One bid was received and staff recommends a contract uh, to provincial contractor services, which is the incumbent. Um, we need a motion to award a three-year contract with two optional renewals uh, to provincial contractor services of Castleton, New York, for an amount not to exceed two hundred ninety thousand dollars. I got a motion on this. Oh, second, Jerry. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Did you finish or did I? No, no. I was just going to say that obviously these are, um, you know, if, if we have a uh, replacement that needs to uh, occur to the shelters, this is the contract. Yeah. 
And these, these people are on call, correct? Yep. Something happens in there, we don't have to wait. No, accident, grab yeah. glass, take them out, put the glass in, there we go. Happens a lot.
I want to call it a, a shop that you know is better than any other shop. So I don't have the information because no one else on it. But uh, I can tell you the conversation. It, it is now ahead of its curve, ahead of the curve. But 20 years ago, um, unfortunately, it was uh, behind the times, say the least. I think it should be noted that the overwhelming majority are not a defect. They keep the buses from moving. You know, sometimes they're serious, non serious. But every one of them gets fixed. You see a movement towards independent audits in that area? No. <laughs> That's the same thing. Not at all. Not at all. We, you know, we, several of us have had conversations about this. We don't understand why not. But it's the part of the business that people don't want to hold at the table. People from the outside. And frankly, there are a lot of issues that you're opening yourself up to uh, lots of legal issues. You know, what's written in that report could be used to imagine what against us. So, I mean, there's not some reasons for it. Yeah, I, I would think that people would want to do this. You know, Dave and I have been through this you know, from the beginning, and, and at least uh, we did this because we were in trouble. We were not in good shape. But we stuck with it over time because now we see it's a bad guy. It's just like a, an internal auditor looking State comes in too. Right? Yeah. To, to look, look Not like this, Pat. Okay. Not like this. They're much, they're much, they're much more on the uh, private side of school buses. They're much more people than they do. So they assume that we know what we're doing. <laughs> The next uh, item we discussed was the risk management and workers' compensation quarterly report. Amanda Avery provided that report and uh, reviewed the adequacy of our risk management and workers' compensation health insurance account. And uh, the committee determined that both accounts are adequate at this time. Any questions on that? All right. And then uh, Mike Collins provided the monthly management report. Our uh, mortgage reporting tax is 34% over budget for the year so far. Our customer payers are 15% over budget, and our rent to the rail station uh, is 35% over budget. The wages are 3.5% under budget for the year due mainly to manpower uh, challenges. Workers' compensation is under budget by 47% due to less scheduled months of use awards. Uh, we are in a good financial position and are making budget modifications to adjust for changes in state operating systems. Any questions on that? Mike can answer those. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, hearing none, I'll move along then. Uh, monthly nine financial report was provided by Chris Desney. Um, uh, the fixed route ridership is up 21% for the month and 21% for the year. Uh, star ridership is up 17% for the month and 18% for the year. Our fixed route on-time performance is 72% and star on-time performance is 80%. Missed trips continue to be high due to manpower issues and we expect this to continue. Um, our absenteeism report shows that 10.3% of overall work days are not worked. And your questions on that? Overall, um, ridership is doing good, despite everything that's going on. And we had quite a discussion about manpower. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. And everybody's shrugging their shoulders, I think. We aren't giving up. Questions. Our next scheduled meeting is October 19th at 110 Water Creek Avenue. We're on the other side. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Uh, we'll move on to the next item. Phase one of a customer satisfaction survey and a monthly 
communications, and community engagement report. At Advocacy, Carm Brazil discussed our continued efforts in ensuring customers and operators are safe on buses. The mask mandate has been lifted, easing the burden on our operators and customers. Jonathan Scherzer outlined the results of a customer satisfaction survey that was conducted June 7th through the 14th. More than 400 onboard surveys were collected across various times of the day. 95% of, of customers believe CDTA provides value to the community, and 91% of the customers are satisfied with our service, which is 17% higher than the industry sample average. Overall, customers say the most important elements of bus service are on-time performance, bus cleanliness, and the ease of finding buses running on schedule. Next customer survey will take place in early 2023. Jamie Castle summarized the media relations community engagement report. CDTA earned 15 media placements in television, newspaper, and radio throughout last month. <coughs> Stories focused on our expansion into Montgomery County, covering the rollout service and our expanded universal access partnership with the Greater Amsterdam School. Some of our community engagement activities have included Italia Fest in Amsterdam, the annual Carrot Festival, and the Mississippi Day Celebration in August. Jamie outlined upcoming events, which includes an announcement of a new Universal Access Partner, a celebration to mark the 20th anniversary of the Rensselaer Rail Station, and CBTA Pink Bus Pull to support the real men wear pink camp. Any questions? I figured somebody have a question on the Carrot Festival. No, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll go All right, to the bus poll. October 21st. That'll be here at CDTA. Every year I put it on my calendar. Every year I miss it. You might want to get a team together. Yeah, you know, the next meeting of the committee is scheduled for Thursday, October 20th, 2022, at 11 15. One ten more than we have. Uh, the uh, the customer survey report was really interesting. Yeah. I look forward to uh, future reports from the board on that. Yeah, we're using uh, Transpo to do that now, which lines up with our Trans dashboard, which I'll talk about in a minute. But yeah, the stuff that they provide that allows us to dig a little deeper into, which <coughs> is a resident. Well, I don't know. Close to expert, right? It seems to have more fun. Yeah, there, there's, there's so many ways you can slice the dice and also include it. I mean, the, the, the term industry standard came up. I was just sort of wondering there are, uh, you know, do, do you look at that as a, okay, well, we have different characteristics than, than this population, or, or do we feel comfortable with that characteristic, such as uh, municipalities or regions that have uh, light rail and bus? Depends on your view, right? You can either slide your way in or slide your way out. Yeah. I'd rather be in. <laughs> are these checkoff cards or are they face to face interviews? They're face to face. Okay. Yeah, the job on the bus is all the bulk could be days and big parts. Uh, night job as well. So it's not really an issue. Do you interview people at waiting at the bus stop? Waiting at the bus stop? It's a third party. So the third party may. They may interview them at the bus stop, but, but they're more than likely probably interviewing. Their methodology is that every fourth customer they approach. Oh, blindly, whoever it is, one, two, three, four, next. One, two, three, four, next. If that person decides to participate. If the person doesn't decide to participate, then they can't. Thank you. A lot of science stuff. Sure. <clears throat> but there's definitely a different feel to was great for many years for us. Been great. Just kind of, I guess, aged out. <laughs> Different needs, too, as a company. That at that point, as cars fucked up the garage and all those things, that's when Backfinder needed to tell us how good we were at doing our own activities. Now we need to know what the public thinks about that. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, 
very important to remember is this is what the <coughs> customer thinks and says, not what we think or say, what the customer thinks and says, or whoever we're talking. Next up is uh, Mike Pershawn with the uh, Strategic Operational Planning Committee. Jamie, thank you, and thank you again for stepping in uh, no last minute last week. Um, the committee met uh, last week, September 22nd, uh, here at 110 Water Balloon Dad and we have Microsoft Teams. Uh, we have one consent agenda item for the board, uh, and that's uh, approve our budget adjustment. We are proposing an adjustment to the fiscal year 2023 operating budget because the New York increased state operating assistance to $51.6 million in April after our final budget was approved. We propose the following changes to the budget, uh, an increase of the STOA line to $2.9 million, decrease the federal assistance line by $1 million to reduce reliance on our 5307 capital program. Increase the wage line by $1.5 million due to the attendance program and increase the utility line by $400,000 due to the escalating energy prices in the market. The net change is an increase of $1.9 million or roughly 1.7%. The composite budget was provided. Uh, the committee is looking for a motion to increase the fiscal year 2023 operating budget by $1.9 million. The revised fiscal year 2023 operating <coughs> budget will be $116,248,217. Thank you, Second. Second. Questions? Dave, when you, when you were first on the board, what was the size of the budget? You know, I was just shaking my head, Jamie. I, I don't remember. I mean, it was probably in the $60 million range, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I remember 70 when I first joined. So, yeah, I remember So I, I remember mm -hmm. when one of our CEOs left. He left here to go to Pittsburgh. At that time, the budget <coughs> deficit in Pittsburgh, the deficit was larger than our annual budget. So why I remember that, I don't know. But, but it was $60 million, so that's what I'm sticking with. Sounds like a few other systems. Yeah, I don't know whether to be happy or proud of this. I kind of just go around the back. When I started here a couple of years ago, I was like 30. You remind me, though, like the federal one down the line. We just moved it because we, we remember we got more SOA, so the draw on 5507. Correct, Mike. Oh, got it. We spent okay. more on capital. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
participation plan, online sur survey tools, study advisory committee, pop-up events, and public meetings will be made available over the next several months, and the goal is to have this study completed by next year, July. Uh, that concludes my report. The committee will meet uh, October 20th here at 110 Waterville Ave and via Microsoft Teams. All right. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Are we going to be pulling Amsterdam into this? Into, into what Mike was just Yeah, eventually. Uh, but as far as like the bus lanes and BRT study, right now there's nothing that pops out. But yeah, they'll, they'll be part of the study. Is the main, is the main Amsterdam school transportation? Are we getting up? <clears throat> We're providing transportation to the high school. Yes. Right? Are we getting getting a lot of pedestrians or regular people on it? Yeah, you, <clears throat> I was going to mention in, in my report uh, about 300 high school students a day. We don't have numbers yet because we didn't, we didn't have a pair of boxes now for the first couple of weeks. We have rough numbers. We don't like to, to lean only on our event press when it comes to master counting system. But yeah. It's <coughs> small numbers, but we're wrong. We'll start to have regular reports. That's what we're I guess uh, you're up, Carl. Yeah. You're abbreviated. Uh, well, I, 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 not much. Well, well, also, not much to, to, to mention. The committee's got it all. Thank you for the, the budget adjustment. We appreciate the flexibility. But I think it shows you that the company is uh, very good. Georgie said that it's not the case ever. So uh, I think we can move ahead year to year uh, easily and smoothly. Uh, Montgomery County, Joe mentioned, we're getting our operating experience so far so good. You know, some, some pitfalls, some things that we didn't expect. But uh, so far, our fifth member county uh, is uh, producing well. By the way, that's the first thing that ever happened in the history of the company that we added. I, there were times that I didn't think it was going to happen. So as we talk about a fifth county, we're engaged in conversations, continued conversations with, uh, with our, our friends in Hunts Falls. Uh, I would say things are going good in those discussions. We have to figure out how to bring their employees into it. It's, it's a merger, not a company start from scratch. We would basically operate the service as it's operating today. Uh, but that looks promising. Timetable, you know, by this time next year, it should all be done. Um, reality, someone mentioned, which I think was Joe again, uh, our HR issues. And I hate, hate to call them HR issues because it's, it's really, it's far beyond HR. But uh, we are struggling um, to recruit and retain people like we have never struggled before. Um, as of this writing, close to 20 people are in our training class, about halfway through. If they all make it and if they all stay, there'll be some relief uh, by you know, the end of October. Lots of ifs in, in that equation, uh, mainly with the existing workforce. Do 15 people decide to find their happiness elsewhere in the next three or four weeks? It's just unknown. Uh, that's why it's not just, it's not an HR issue. It's a, it's a company issue. Um, it's a society issue. It's, yeah, pick, pick, pick the word, right? Um, COVID, um, popping up. It's changed everything. When, so I, I've had a head cold for a couple days. Never would I think that I'd be testing every single one. My wife said, what are you doing? Do you want COVID? I'm not going to work, though. Right. Anyway, it's changed everything. Uh, it's a five day off minimum. So you add in, it was short, you add that you now have in September, two dozen positive cases. All of those people are out for at least five days, at least some of them long. And, and you know, it's, it's a magician act downstairs getting the work out every day. I mean, literally magical. Sometimes I'll go down and yesterday. It, 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 it's borderline comical what people are pulling together to get work out. So hats 
hats off to the loyal members of the ATU who are, who are giving the time. Oh, we talked about the state mask mandate, you know, and I want to make sure that people don't think that we advocated so hard for this because we didn't care about the spread. That was not the case. It was, it was the havoc that it was causing on board buses for our bus operators and others. <coughs> And, and customers, customers just read one themselves. Uh, with mask on, uh, mask on, that kind of thing. So happily, we're very happy the governor's office listened <coughs> and took action. Uh, the strategic plan, uh, excuse me, the strategic planning committee will host the board retreat in November, um, November 17th. Place, we will. Uh, we'll get that to you shortly, but it'll give us a chance, I think, to talk about the stuff that we talk about here in snippets. It would be maybe a couple hours if we talk about electrification, facilities, uh, the uh, hiring and pension issues that we talked about. What will the what will the five or six county CDTA service network look like? Or what should it look? Of those kinds of discussions that we, you know, maybe don't have time for in the committee, we'll set some time aside that we can talk to you that. But, you know, did you ever think that this would be a six county uh, system and what are the impacts? Sometimes I think we just move so fast through the issues of, of, of the day and we don't get to uh, step back. Um, ridership, you know, we, uh, we talked that it can't be everything. Remember this, Transdash, remember Mark Ash? It's, it's just about done. It's about ready to be unveiled. Uh, and it doesn't focus only on ridership. Ridership is a big part of it. I mean, you know, aren't going to count the customers uh, and, and how you, you know, position yourself and value and all that problem. So I wanted to make note that in September, I didn't look today, but in September, there will be two or three days where we hit the 50,000 boarding mark. We haven't done that since the pandemic began. So we are on our way back. We're solidly 80% back. Uh, so there are good very things happening. Yeah. And that's very different than in other places. Oh, very. You know, Denise and Dave can tell you because they're exposed to other systems much more than the rest of us. Bus-only systems continue to struggle. We are sh still struggling. But you know, we would all at always hope to be 90%. So you know, be at 80 or 82, whatever we're at, is, is testament to the work that everybody here does. Testament to universal access agreements kind of propping us up. Uh, testament to people that we do matter. So I think what Transdash will help us is to sort of tell our story without leaning over. Any questions for Barb? Comment, uh, you had you, there was a discussion going on before you said you didn't know if it was good or bad or what it had. Um, but you just talked about scale, right? Um, if, if it's the same for three counties, two counties, and all that. So, right, and you've let, uh, you've improved what you've done, you've improved what we've done, and, and now we're serving more people, and I think, so I, I, I follow me. One other thing, one thing that I wanted to ask Mike, just um, not going back into the budget, but the mortgage report impacts and where the economy is going and all. What's the budget philosophy behind that element? How are, how are you projecting? Well, you know, sorry, that's sorry. That's a really that's good question. <laughs> Mike, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a very good philosophy to tell you. I just I can't predict it just now. 
Yeah, and the question not, is not coming from a knowing angle. It was more just that it's a big question. Not a big time. Third year rates just went above seven, right? Yeah. I have a couple acquaintances that are in the flip housing business that have stopped because they know they're going to get caught. But I remember 13%. <laughs> Well, it's not going to go back to where it was, right? Because the value of property, real estate, is yeah. different today than it was 20 years ago. So, you know, rest assured that it's not going back to 80. You know, we can't, and this is, God love those of you that remember Art Young, you know, longtime board member on the county. We used to disagree about this. And I would show them 30 years worth of results. I said, you can model this. No, you can't model it. It's the housing market. Nobody can model it. Uh, but you can model the trend. And it's, gonna, you know, it's not going to go to this way. It's going to gently. So luckily, you know, our, federal, our federal situation financially is in pretty good shape. So we'll be able to move some things around. Well, and you've also been pretty conservative in that estimate of the income going to be, unlike the true reporting tax. Which is why we're always we're always showing that we're ahead of the budget, you know. So that's <laughs> there's some support on the board for that. Lots of support. Do you need more sand for the bags that you're building? <laughs> well, I think we're, we're, where we've changed too. I'll, I'll quote another all the time, former all the time board member Tom Owens, who said, "Hey, just tell me, tell me the rabbits that you want to know with every rat, where every rabbit was." I think we've done a pretty good job with the board in showing you here's all the rabbits, okay, so that you all know which ones that we pull. And, and I think the key here is that we've built we've built the model here, the CDT model, so there's lots of flexibility. We have options. I remember you know, telling my kids when they grew up that you got to have options in life because then you know if you hit a, if you hit a wall, you can go left or you can go right. So I think we've built the financial model collectively with board and staff. So, so there are options. Mortgage tax dips will go over here. If customer revenue increases, we'll modify this. You know, options. I mean, you go through this all the time, don't you? I was going to say, you can get it out. <laughs> <laughs> we're, uh, we're 10 days away from... from uh, providing to our legislature the executive budget, and I haven't slept in a couple weeks, and, and that's one of the issues is the uncertainty of what we're quickly approaching here. Uh, our sales tax revenue from the county and other counties is near record high. That's not all anticipated. We're already starting to see a decline in the early reports of end of quarter three. Uh, so there are there is a lot of Unknowns out there, but I don't think you get in trouble if you conservatively budget, and it sounds like that's where the situation that we're looking at here. So, if there are those roadblocks or obstacles, there are some places to uh, maneuver. So, yeah, and a, listen, the, the bigger, the biggest issue probably in the upcoming year is you know, we have one of the biggest issues the our collective bargaining agreement expires. Year. I mean, we always want to do right by our employees. Uh, we want to do the right thing. We have issues recruiting and retention. But at the same time, we have to balance the boat, right? Uh, the question will be, how do you do those things and continue to take care of your employees? Maybe start to address in a different, in an innovative way, uh, this recruitment and retention problem. But understand that, you know, nothing lasts forever. We're painfully going through that process too uh, at the county. We have 19 bargaining units, and, and uh, there's a lot of, I think, positioning from from staff that believe that because of a number of factors, including inflation, the cost of everyday living, that they warrant a certain increase in their uh, their salary, and then we are under the constraints of the overall budget. Certain real life things to, to balance, and it is exactly that. I feel very fortunate to have the hard working staff that we do, and I know that you, know, you do as well, Clark, uh, and the board. But there's a there's a 
balance and making sure that they're happy and that happiness keeps them in the door. You know, keeps them at work and, and you don't lose because there is a revolving door of opportunities out there that, that are these real life people are, are taking these opportunities that in previous years had never even imagined walking in the door now doing it for <coughs> so um, I'm happy to to share some insight from what I can in
I, I grew up in New York City and felt entitled to uh, get everywhere I needed to go by transit conveniently. Uh, when I moved to Albany in December of 85 and thereafter, uh, I you know, considered the uh, CDTA to be a skeletal system and service inadequate. I've seen improvements since then, and you know, especially under CARB's leadership and uh, staff, uh, Chris, Mike, uh, Ruff, Ross, the others. Um, this is a very progressive, innovative system which makes uh, continuous, very uh, rider sensitive improvements on an ongoing basis. These just provide real leadership for transit around the state. I'm very, I'm building the support of the board. Uh, I'm, I'm very proud of all of you uh, and what you've done. Uh, my main activity is as a member of the uh, policy committee of the New York Renews Coalition, which drafted and led the path the effort to pass the 2019 uh, climate law, now working uh, with the State Climate Action Council, which is drafting the implementation plan. I presented some comments to that. And the New York News Coalition is, has been pushing uh, and will make a strong effort in the coming legislative session to increase funding to implement the law. Most people, you know, are now recognizing that the uh, climate crisis is not a threat to future generations or polar bears, but a clear and present danger to people around the world. If you look at Florida now, the whole western United States, the rationing water, uh, Lake Mead is running so low that they may not be able to power the turbines. Pakistan, 30 million people flooded out of their homes. East Africa, a comparable number of threatened with famine. Puerto Rico, <laughs> that's Mississippi, anywhere is threatened. The forecasts are with a business as usual scenario. Uh, sandy like superstorms could hit the New York metro area much more frequently by mid-century, perhaps annually by the end of the century. That's unacceptable. Uh, we've got to make major investments faster than are called for in uh, the New York climate law and this federal uh, law that was just passed, the Inflation Reduction Act. They're a big, big substantial step forward, but they're not enough according to uh, what the uh, International Panel on Climate Change, the global scientific body, is telling us we have to do to reduce emissions globally by 50% by the end of this decade. And that means some rich countries responsible for most of the emissions have to do, should morally do more. So the faster we can get to electrifying the transit system, uh, the better. And the New York Reduce Coalition is part of our advocacy <coughs> is to expand, improve, and electrify transit. So um, I, I appreciate the work that CTTA has done to improve the system, make it more customer friendly, and start electrifying it. The faster we can go with uh, allies and supporters around the state, the better off we'll all be. Thank you very much. <laughs>